Hi again, everyone, and welcome to Badger Breakdown. I'm Mike Lucas from UWBadgers.com. I'm joined by Matt LePay, the voice of the Badgers. When we reflect on the Nebraska game, there was enough good to be encouraged and enough not so good to be grounded. <laughs> That's a very good way of putting it. Uh, the good was how they started. Joel Stavi, his first, first start. Yeah. His first start away from home. I thought he looked uh, like a veteran quarterback for the most part. Tough. Took a lot of hits in that game and uh, you know, a little slow to get up those last couple, but he took took some hard shots. Going in, Mike, I think if you're a Badger fan, you wanted, if you said it's going to go down to the final couple minutes in a game like that, you'd take it, but when you fall a little bit short, then it's it, you're right, it does keep you grounded. I'm curious now how we balance it out, what we saw in Lincoln, that offense in the first half and then some of the success they had and then the inability to, to really move the chains at all in the second half. I really want to give more credit to Nebraska. I, I think a home crowd has a lot to do uh, with fueling that home team and, and lifting them when they were down. And that certainly was the case in the third quarter. Yeah, they stayed quiet for a while, but that crowd wasn't going to stay quiet. It was kind of a self-starting group there in, in, in the stands down there in Lincoln. And they are pretty good athletes on defense. Is Nebraska's defense where it wants to be? No, the famed black shirts and all that. But at the second half, it looked that way. And I think with, with the Badgers, it still comes back to consistency. They, at times, you see some good spurts, some good things offensively, but it's about doing it throughout the course of the game. And it's still a part of you get probably tired of hearing it, but it's real that the transition that this, this group is in is that it's noticeable on the offensive side. And the real frustration for everyone is that you had a team on the ropes and you just you couldn't apply the killer punch to them and you couldn't hold on. And maybe it's just part of this very painful learning process. I'm not sure. Yeah, I think defensively Wisconsin played pretty well, but in the second half it was on the field too much. The offense, if it wasn't going to score, you would have liked to have seen it move the chain a couple times and just keep the defense off the field, give it a chance to rest, but it was three plays and punt, maybe a four play punt kind of drive and then the defense is right back out there and with the speed that Nebraska has, Taylor Martinez, his running ability and as good as Rex Burkhead is, Amir Abdullah I think is before he's done is going to be a star very in good. this league. He is a very, very gifted runner. I'd like to see the Badgers kind of attain that type of balance with with their rushing attack there's no question Monte Ball deserves a majority of the snaps but what they've done at Nebraska especially with Burkett coming back off the injuries they, they've tried to even it up a little bit because they offer different styles whether it's Burkett or Abdul I think we have this here to a certain extent with with Ball and, and White and, and with Melvin Gordon yeah absolutely I think everybody would love to see uh, James White who we have seen and you know how good he can be You've had glimpses of Melvin Gordon, and I think everybody's eager to see some more glimpses of that. It'll be interesting to see this week against Illinois what the approach will be offensively. We talked here last week about you'd love to see Melvin get it in his hands eight to ten times. We'll see if maybe this week they can get a little closer to that number. Defensively, we've seen some promising things throughout this season. I, I, was, I was happy for David Gilbert yeah. at Nebraska for some of the things he said. He knew he was wrong. And then to come out and make a play, make a play, get a sack, cause a fumble. Uh, maybe it's a turning point for David. Yeah, you know what? I think how he handled himself after the game, too, because yes. it was obvious he was going to be asked that question, and he was a stand-up guy. He didn't hide, so, okay, you, you move forward, lesson learned. It was funny, I was swapping some messages with a buddy of mine down in, uh, in Lincoln, and he was just raving about Mike Taylor and Chris Borland. You know, people around here know how good they are. And it's my counterpart down in Nebraska saying he could watch those two all day. And I think a lot of people around here would say the same thing. Uh, when they're on, man, they're, they're flying around and, and showing that they can move a little bit. It was after the long kickoff return, the 83-yard return by Abdullah, where Borland went to work. <laughs> and that first down play flew over, I think it was Spencer Long, the point guard, yeah. and just threw down the ball carrier yeah. and then made the tackle on third. Th those are the types of energy plays we've seen out of Borland. Absolutely. That was a big time stamp by, by the defense uh, being up against it and holding Nebraska to a field goal there. So now you want to see him pick up where they left off. And again, I go back to what we were talking about a couple of minutes ago. I'd like to see that Wisconsin defense on the sideline a little longer too. Badgers have always, with Barry and now with Brett Bielema, they prided themselves on time of possession. You'd really like to see that offense stay on the field a little longer, especially as the game moves into the third and fourth quarters. And to be honest, Illinois is kind of a mystery. The mystery is why are they so bad? Yeah. I mean, because last year you think back, and I know there's personnel changes and coaches changes, but Illinois could have been up 31 to nothing in the first half, and the Badgers needed to knock the ball loose about three consecutive possessions to rally for that win. Yeah, remember a muffed uh, a punt, so yeah. a muffed 
uh, by the punter. He couldn't handle the snap that uh, that helped trigger Wisconsin too. And that turnovers have been a big issue for here, for Illinois. Uh, had six turnovers in the loss to Louisiana Tech last week against Penn State. Defense gets a three and out, and then Illinois muffs the punt. Illinois then later runs into the kicker. So they're doing a lot of those kind of things right now, kind of hurting themselves. Athletically, you look at them, how long have we said this about Illinois? So they, they, they recruit pretty well. Ron Zook did, they recruited well before him, but right now they're just having a hard time putting it together. Shieldhouse apparently is healthy now again, and that'll help their, their offense because he wasn't able to run the ball or, or just be himself. And when he's doing both, kind of a dual threat, they're just more effective. Healthy and, and, and I think tough. And that was one thing that Very Brett, much Beal, so, yeah, yeah. Brett, Brett talked about that, how impressed he was because, you know, he, he he's had the ankle issue and then uh, Shieldhouse and then he got rocked pretty hard a couple times in the Penn State game, but he kept getting up in a game that got out of hand fairly early. So he can run it, he can throw it. And they've got a little contrast in their running game with uh, they got the big guy, and then they have the guy who, can, uh, who maybe isn't as big, but he can get outside and do some damage. Now I know some people want to Look ahead and peek at Purdue. Can't do it, not uh, this year. Not now, especially in the division. Uh, I mean, now where you, you already have a loss to begin with in league play, but now this is a division game with Illinois. We know who's ineligible. We know who the eligible teams are. And, and really, with the, when it's within the division, it doesn't matter anyway. You need to take care of things. Home field one, division game two, it, it's very, very important. For Matt LePay, I'm Mike Lucas. Thanks for watching Badger Breakdown on UWBadgers.com.